President Biden addressed the nation for the first time last night after a surprising exit from the presidential race. It was an 11 minute speech focused on defending democracy and highlighting his policies. Political strategist Tom Serafin joins us live this morning. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning to you. So, Tom, what we didn't hear in this speech was what we tuned in for, why he was stepping out of the race, other than a line about passing the torch to a younger generation. Your thoughts on that? Well, it would have been very difficult for him, as it has been for the last year, year and a half, to admit that, you know, he might be slowing down and he wasn't uh, 100% there to be president of the United States. It was a very difficult decision to make. 56 years ago, Lyndon Johnson made the same uh, uh, statement from the White House that he was getting out of the race and wasn't going to run for re-election. Uh, Richard Nixon got into the race, obviously. Hubert Humphrey was there, the Democratic candidate, and they came to Chicago in 68. We had all the riots. So history is repeating itself. You know, Joe Biden gets out of the race. His vice president takes over. And now they're coming to Chicago in August for this thing. It, you know, it's it, it, very interesting how history works. And so, you know, it, it's difficult for him. He doesn't want this to be a Harris-Biden finish to his legacy as president of the United States. I think he's going to be very active on the campaign trail. And I think he's going to do a lot of good on the international scene. Now he can legislate, he can govern without any fear of worrying about getting reelected, which is a real asset if you're a politician. And President Biden did use the term democracy and defending democracy several times last night. Do you think that was a swipe at former President Trump? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, and that's his goal. And, and that's one of the agendas for the Democratic Party is to save democracy from the person they believe is going to take democracy and toss it into the ash can. Uh, and and that, that's their principle on their on their platform. So that's the reason they made this switch. According to the Democratic Party, they're trying to save the country and save democracy for the United States of America. And that's one of the reasons why they encouraged and pushed President Biden to get out of office or not run for re-election. And it's it's uh, it's so interesting that they they use those terms, isn't it, Tom? Because many voters, uh, 16 million of them who voted for Biden might say this wasn't a very democratic process because we really didn't get to choose who we wanted in the end. Uh, but moving on from that, do you think that President Biden did enough to get Democratic voters behind Kamala Harris? I think he did. Uh, you know, he only mentioned her uh, very briefly in his speech, uh, but he's going to have to demonstrate that on the campaign trail, and he will do that because she's going to be carrying on his legacy. Remember, his legacy su survives and it succeeds if she wins the presidency. Winners write history. So he needs her to be successful for his legacy to work. And that's very important to him, at the, especially at this stage in life. His whole family was in the Oval Office when he made that speech last night. Uh, the same thing with Lyndon Johnson when he did that in 1968. This is really the culmination of 52, 55 years in public life. And it's a difficult thing to walk away from anything in life. Uh, you know, so it, it, for him to do this last night, and to do it as well as he did, I, I, you know, he stumbled, obviously, but he did it very well from my vantage point. I know it's a painful thing for him personally to have to do it this way. It's very hard to walk away when you think you still got it. Uh, uh, but, you know, he, he did the right thing for the Democratic Party. And the party, you know, encouraged him to do it, pushed him in, in that direction. So, you know, we'll see how it works. He certainly doesn't want to go down, though, in the last six months of his presidency as a as a vice president kind of person he doesn't want to be a harris biden he wants the biden harris ticket to succeed he wants vice president harris to win but he doesn't want to be number two in the white house for the last six months so he's not going to give up the mantle that easy he's going to run and be president all the way through january makes a lot of sense now that it looks like the <clears throat> democrats are moving forward with harris it seems like Every day, there's somebody new that she's now considering to be her potential vice president. Any thoughts on who might make the uh, right running mate for her? 
I think it's going to be Governor Shapiro because they desperately need Pennsylvania to win this thing. And uh, one of the reasons uh, Donald Trump took Mr. Vance, Senator Vance, is because of his ability to talk to blue collar workers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin. Those are real important states. Whoever wins the most of those states is going to be the next president of the United States. There's a lot of talk yesterday. Uh, J.B. Prisker, our governor, talked about the fact that he has been talking to the Harris campaign. Uh, he's certainly in the top seven, top eight uh, candidates. But he doesn't bring as much to the table as Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania. I mean, he brings a largesse and he brings his ability on the abortion issue and and the uh, and a blue state governor. But we're going to be a blue state for the rest of our adult lifetimes. Uh, so she needs help in Pennsylvania. Shapiro seems like the logical choice right now. Tom Serafin, thanks so much for <laughs> sharing your thoughts on President Biden's address to the nation last night. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.